On a grey morning in late November, when daylight felt as scarce as forgotten melody, Kate stood by her kitchen window, cup of coffee in hand, watching the tendrils of steam curl upward as if reaching for the sun she knew was just beyond the clouds. She's been reading the news, again, about vitamin D, the so-called sunshine vitamin that scientists and journalists alike have been championing, debating, refining and redefining over the past few years. But today's headlines felt fresher, more urgent. Just last week, researchers at Trinity College Dublin published a sweeping analysis of half a million people showing that no two bodies respond to the winter sun in the same way. Some folks, simply by virtue of being older or carrying a few extra pounds, hardly ever convert those pale, filtered UVB rays into usable vitamin D, no matter how long they stand outside. Meanwhile, others, blessed with lean frames and youthful skin, seem to pull sunlight into their system with invaluable ease. That insight, Kate realized, might explain why a blanket advice, everybody needs the same dose of vitamin D, have done little to stem the tide of deficiency. She remembered a different article from a few days ago on Science Daily that went beyond clinical trials to peek into our own cells. Researchers there had turned their microscopes on a little-known gene called SDR42E1. When they flipped the switch on the gene in colorectal cancer cells, those cells gobbled up more vitamin D, then promptly collapsed under its influence. The discovery hinted at an entirely new frontier, gene-inspired therapies that could help our bodies not only absorb more vitamin D, but also use it to help fend off tumors. It felt almost cinematic in its implications. If we could one day tweak our own genetic switches to supercharge the vitamins we go, got from the sun or from our breakfasts, maybe it could prevent diseases that have long um, eluded prevention. Back at her kitchen table, Kate rubbed her temples. She had always thought vitamin D was simple. Sun in the morning, fresh or yogurt at night, and maybe a tablet on uh, grey days. But here she was the realization point that absorbing vitamin D was as much a matter of personal chemistry, age or weight as of um, exposure to sun. Just a week earlier, an AOL nutrition column had spelled out dozens of potential pitfalls. The diuretic that raises blood calcium, the seizure medication that speeds vitamin D breakdown, the cholesterol drug that blocks its assimilation, even the fat blocker at the pharmacy that, su that left supplements stranded in the intestines. If you were on a daily uh, prednisone for uh, arthritis, you might need extra D to keep your bones from creaking. If you were on diagesine from uh, arterial fibration, too much D could tip the balance toward dangerous arrhythmias. Even bile acid sequestrants prescribed to lower cholesterol demand careful spacing of D supplements to allow any of it to slip into the bloodstream. That nuance, Kate thought, explained why general guidelines often felt like shouting at the ocean. One size fits, actually, very few. But one size, for its flaws, had persisted over the years. Government agencies in many countries still recommend roughly 600 international units IUs for adults under 70 and 800 IUs for older folk while infants and toddlers were told to get 400 IUs. Pregnant women, precariously straddling their own needs and those of their babies, were urged to hit 600 IUs as well. But the Trinity study reminded us that those numbers were just starting lines, not universal destinations. A 45-year-old with pale skin and a lunchtime walkthrough might need only 600 IUs beyond her background sun exposure, 
while someone with darker skin pigment and a desk job might be scrambling for 1000 or 2000 IUs just to maintain the same blood levels of vitamin D. The conversations about dosing had grown more adventurous. Harvard Gazette had, uh, in May, published a report that felt more like science fiction than nutritional advice. Over five years, in the massive vital trial, a subset of men and women taking 2000 IUs of vitamin D3 daily enjoyed not just stronger bones, but longer telomeres, the protective caps on our chromosomes that normally uh, fray with age. The researchers calculated that these supplements effectively turn back the clock on cellular aging by nearly three years. They dared to whisper that a simple affordable vitamin might someday become an anti-aging therapy and, more tantalizing still, help to stave off chronic diseases tied to telomere shortening. We are only scratching the surface, the lead scientist Dr. Joanne Manson had proclaimed. Who would have guessed that a little vitamin could carry the promise of longer, healthier lives? Yet, many physicians are cautious and wisely urged a tailored approach. First, get tested. A simple 25-hydroxyvitamin D blood test ordered alongside a routine panel could reveal whether you were running on empty, teetering on deficiency, or safely within 50 to 100 nanomoles per liter most experts deem healthy. If you fell below 30 nanomoles per liter, you might start on a short course of higher dose supplementation, perhaps 1000 to 2000 IUs daily for a few weeks until level climbed above 50. Above the threshold, maintenance dose could range anywhere from 600 to 1200 IUs, and depending on your lifestyle, season, or uh, risk factors. Someone with limited sun exposure, like night shift workers, uh, those living north of 45th parallel, or residents of large, smoke-shrouded cities, might hover near immunity's edge without a little pill in hand. For children, advice took on its own rhythm. A newborn, chubby cheek, pressed against the sunlit grill of a stroller, carried zero risk of squinting through glass, but needed a modest 400 IU daily, if exclusively breastfed. Formula-fed children theoretically receive enough through milk and fortified cereals. Still, pediatrics boards recommend an extra supplement between October and March, when indoor days outnumber the outdoors. Teens, plagued by acne creams that could heighten sun sensitivity, often found themselves tiptoeing away from open windows, even as their bones demanded a steady influx of vitamin D to lock in the growth spurts of adolescence. A 15-year-old basketball player might clock sunrise practice in 20 minutes of northern light, then need only 600 IU to stay topped up. A bookish 16-year-old might require more or risk stealthy bone thinning that could manifest years later as stress fractures. Furthermore, pregnant and nursing women carry the dual responsibility. Research hinted that adequate maternal D levels reduce the risk of preeclampsia and gestational diabetes and may even lower the child's lifetime odds of autoimmune disease. Still, the consensus held at roughly 600 to 1000 IU daily, taken alongside prenatal vitamins and diet rich in eggs and fish. The nourishing power of D, which among other things helps in absorption of calcium, kept both mother and baby skeleton strong, ready for the newborn's first steps into reality. Now, speaking of absorption, vitamin D plays roles far beyond helping your gut absorb calcium. One of its most celebrated extraskeletal jobs is tuning your immune system. By stimulating the type 1 interferon pathway, vitamin D3 helps kickstart the body's first line of defense against viruses and bacteria, 
improving your ability to clear infections before they take hold. This immune boosting effect is most robust with the D3 form and underlies ongoing research into vitamin D's potential for reducing the severity of respiratory illnesses and other infections. Vitamin D also signals through receptors in the heart, blood vessels, and endocrine tissues to support cardiovascular health. It helps regulate the renin-angiotensin system, which in turn can lower blood pressure and reduce strain on the heart. At the same time, vitamin D's partnership with calcium in the circulatory system promotes flexible arteries rather than rigid calcified ones, helping maintain smooth blood flow and um, optimal circulation. In the brain, vitamin D influences mood and cognition. Receptors clustered in areas that govern mood, such as the hippocampus or prefrontal cortex, mean that adequate vitamin D levels can help fend off seasonal affective disorder and depression. It also supports nerve cell communication and offers neuroprotective effects that may slow cognitive decline and lower the risk of neurodegenerative conditions like Alzheimer's disease. On a cellular level, Vitamin D acts more like a hormone than a simple nutrient. It modulates gene expression to control cell growth, differentiation, and apoptosis. This hormone-like behavior is being explored for cancer prevention as vitamin D can help restrict tumor blood supply, trigger cancer cell death, and inhibit metastatic spread. As I have mentioned before, um, uh, early clinical hints even suggest that higher D3 intake could lengthen telomeres, uh, those protective chromosome caps, potentially slowing cellular aging by years. Muscle performance and metabolic health also benefit from vitamin D. It enhances muscle strength and coordination, cutting fall risk in older adults. In the pancreas, vitamin D receptors influence insulin production and sensitivity, making adequate D levels a factor in preventing and managing type 2 diabetes. Researchers are now probing how vitamin D interacts with metabolic pathways to curb inflammation and support healthy body weight regulation. Yet supplements alone tell only part of the story. A well-timed lunch with a dollop of full-fat yogurt, a shot of extra virgin olive oil, or a handful of walnuts, could boost the absorption of whatever do you ingested, since the vitamin dissolves most readily alongside fats and oils. Skipping a meal risks sending tablets tumbling straight through the gut with little to show for them. Sunlight, for all its fickleness, remained the gold standard. 15 minutes of midday sun on face and arms could yield more calosalphilerol than any pill though we were also warned to avoid sunburn and the long-term risk of uh, UV damage. So sun cream re-emerged not as a barrier, but as a timing advice. Sun protected sun for a brief window, then laddered protection for the rest of the afternoon. And while you're at it, take off your sunglasses too, to get that uh, circadian rhythms and melatonin regulation going. As a matter of fact, a recent significant study from Sweden found that higher sun exposure is associated with lower all-cause mortality, mainly due to reduced cardiovascular and cancer deaths. Yes, it reduced cancer deaths. The study followed nearly 30,000 Swedish women for about 20 years. Yes, 20 years and showed that those who spent more time in the sun lived longer and, among other things, had fewer heart disease deaths compared to those who avoided sunlight. The benefits were those dependent with moderate to high sun exposure linked to better health outcomes. Now, let's go back to Kate. By the time Kate finished her coffee, the clouds had parted and a pale disk of sun bathed her street in forgiving light. She stepped out with arms bare, letting the old natural remedy to do its work for a few golden minutes before pulling on her coat and hat. She still took her 1000 IU capsule each morning with breakfast, like um, Greek yogurt made with unprocessed milk dotted with walnuts and a swirl of honey. 
But the son's gift felt momentous, almost ceremonial. Vitamin D was no longer a forgotten footnote in her health routine. It had become a monthly dashboard light, flashing warnings or reassurance. It was a daily experiment in balance, a whisper from our evolutionary past that the sky above and the bodies within still dance to ancient rhythms. Back inside, Kate opened her laptop to the latest email from her clinic. The subject line read, your vitamin D results. She took a breath, scrolled through the numbers, and saw a calm bar hovering at 65 nanomoles per liter, well within the sweet spot. A small victory, yes, but also a reminder of how far the science had come. Personalized guidelines, mindful dosing, careful absorption strategies. All of it steered her from confusion to clarity. As twilight gathered at the windows, she closed the screen with a quiet resolve. Tomorrow, she will lace up her sneakers for that lunchtime walk, eat that vitamin D-rich mackerel and keep chasing the sun inside and out. Because in a world brimming with ever-shifting headlines, some things like the gentle power of vitamin born in sunlight never goes out of season. Just like what you have learned today from knowing is winning. Thank you very much for watching.